Hi everyone. It's nice to be here again just sharing a little bit of my life and especially my faith in Christ. So, today I wanted to share a little bit more on Thanksgiving and just the general feeling I have about Thanksgiving. And this is based mostly on the events that have happened the last week. I know I did a thankfulness blog. Um, and this is also a thankfulness blog. But in more detail, what I feel within my spirit. And I just wanted to share with um, with you. And uh, some of you might just find that like, okay, you come and you talk about one or two things here. And why is that? So one of the reasons I started this vlogging and the YouTube channel was because I wanted, one, to share my life in the U.S. Because, believe it or not, it's like uh, there are not enough hours in the day for me to keep in touch with friends and family in Kenya. And I'm, I'm basically sorry for some of you that, you know, we were talking so much when I was in the country and it seems like I just went underground. And a YouTube channel is one of the ways I can share my life with you without having to repeat the story to person A, person B, person C, like that. So you get to know a little bit about me. But also I think knowing about me would be a miss if you didn't know about my faith in Jesus Christ that has become so much more clearer to me when I have been away from Kenya. It's funny. And um, and so I want to share a little glimpses of my faith in Christ because above all things, that's the most important thing to me, above everything, above, above the things that I pursue, above the people I love, and I do love the people that I love big time. But I love the Lord Jesus Christ in such a great way that I want to share the things that he does for me. Because to me, he's worthy of the praise and the glory. And even some of these friends and family that have really impacted my life, I just believe God puts them in my path. In fact, there was a time I had said I will do a thankfulness month for it on my Facebook page, of course, for a month, because I sat down and I looked at the friends that God has given me and has given me the people God has put in my way over the past couple of years. And I, I said, my God, if it hadn't been for this person and this person, I don't know how I would have made it through this season. Yeah. And you know yourself, guys. Some of you know, some of you don't know. Some of you have been with me for a long, long time. And uh, I, I believe that you were put there by, by God. So uh, just as then, when God put friends to be there for me, even now when my friends are not close, I now understand when the Bible says that he's the friend that speaks closer than a brother. And, you know, in the past, I've used this verse to kind of, you know, kind of a little bit of self-pity. Like, yeah, yeah, when friendships don't work out, guess who speaks closer than a brother? Christ. But in this season, actually, it's me who's been uh, non-committal. It's me who hasn't had the time to connect to these friends. But even in my deficiency, there's one friend who, despite how you are is really, really the friend that speaks closer than a brother. And that is not saved from a place of deficiency. It's saved from a place of gratitude. So going back to gratitude and thankfulness, last week I got my employment authorization document notice. That's a big word. So let's just go with my EAD notice. Now, I was very excited. I probably even in my other video said employment authorization, but it's the notice of it. My EAD notice, the one that comes in the mail that says, okay, we've had your appeal, you know, your request for this document and it's on the way now. <laughs> so 
so I got that last week. But I was so excited. It might as well have been the exact thing. Why? The next day, I was on this employer that I had wanted to work for for a long time. And I said, hey, my employment authorization is here. And uh, they said, okay, uh, would you come uh, and meet us on, on Wednesday, now the following week, uh, with your employment authorization? And I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, by the way, I didn't even have it in my hand, the, author, the document, but I had the notice. So in my head, I told myself, I'll take the letter that shows I'll be, the notice that says I'll, I'll be having the EAD with me. You know, it should at least kickstart the whole process of me getting a blood at home. And I was excited. So I said, yes, I'll be there with it. Now, part of me was praying, God, since the notice says the EAD itself will be here within two, one to two weeks and then contact us within 30 days if you don't get anything, God, just make it come quickly, you know. But either way, I, I put in, you know, my letter to the place and they responded that I go on Wednesday. Now, this is what is so amazing. Before Wednesday, on Tuesday, evening, and I mean evening, not afternoon, but evening, uh, my husband went to check the mail and, you know, came with a letter. And that letter had my social security number. Now, in my view, the social security number, and maybe other people who've gone through the immigration process, I don't know how it worked out for you. You can write me in the comments. But in my view, my authorization document was to come first and then my social security number. But my social security number came in that letter, and that's what I used on Wednesday. Now, let me tell you where now this whole thing gets uh how does it get it gets um let's say intricate but not complicated intricate in that it's the point where i would want to share my views or my thoughts on thanksgiving when my social security number came it had been released it uh, on the 12th of february because that is what it's dated, okay? It's dated on the 12th of February. Now, the notice that I got four days prior was also dated on 12th of February. And on 12th of February, I had got a letter by email from... Hmm, now, I'm trying to... My mind processes so many things at a time, but I got this email from a Senate representative who had been putting my request to expedite my employment authorization document to the USCIS. You ask, how does that happen? Well, my employment authorization document took long, so I made a request to USCIS to expedite it, and uh, it didn't seem to to get the traction that I wanted it to get. So I decided to write to the governor's office and then they kicked that back to the senator's office. And I got really lovely people there that helped push that expedite forward with the USCIS. So on this particular day, 12th of February, I also got now the email I'm talking about from the Senate office uh, telling me, oh, we have uh, pushed your request to them, forward to the USCIS, and they say they are burdened with so many expedite cases. So they really cannot give you a date uh, as, to, as when your employment authorization document will come. And I remember that day I s sat at my desk and I, I wrote a thank you. To, to the person there. I'm not going to give their name because I don't think it's it's right to, to just give their name. So, but the person uh, who told me that this, we already got in touch with them and this is what they're saying, but you also contact me in 30 days if nothing happens. And I remember writing thank you for pushing forward 
this matter for me and I wrote I I don't think I'll be uh, calling you not calling you uh, writing you in 30 days because I think it will go forward and I thanked them for actually pushing it forward and just in my spirit I felt peace because in December I had really just become discouraged frustrated very frustrated in December uh, my finances were not going well, and so I was I was really frustrated because let me tell you guys there are many 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 jobs in America, so when you can't work and you're seeing, you know, a billboard here, a billboard there, like apply apply, but you can't work, um, and and you do not have the finances to provide for yourself, it can be quite a challenge. And let me tell you. America is expensive, quite expensive. So just to take you a little bit back, uh, even though I have not worked, God has really, and I have worked sometimes, I'll tell you I've worked sometimes, but of course it had no legitimacy, that kind of work. And so it was on and off, a few and far between, in fact, to be honest, I hadn't worked since August at all, at all, at all. And before that, it had been a day here, a day there, in a week, you know, but it was good, but I wanted more. So, uh, yeah, it had been frustrated. And I think in December was the culmination of all the frustration. So when I tell you that um, on, on 12th of February, I got, you know, an email from, you know, an authority saying that, oh, we've done our best and this is where, how far it goes. It would have been easy for me to be further discouraged. And there was a lot of reason for me to be discouraged. For one, I'm in school and I needed to get my employment authorization because I need to do my internship. And so that was also hanging in the line. When I tell you that God answers you in the very last minute, honestly, I think I need to, to talk with God when I get to heaven and ask him, like, dear Lord, why, 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 why is it just at the last minute? But let, let me tell you, I think God wants to, to raise our faith in him, to trust him so much that he's going to come to because it just came in the last minute. So to me, those dates, the date that I was told, this is the much we can do for you, being the same date as the day the employment authorization was dated, as well as my social security number, it just reminds me of when Daniel was praying and he, he did not receive his response from God. An angel, is it Gabriel? Or Michael, well, both eventually got involved in, in all this because one had to come and help the other. I hope I'll insert the caption for where to get that in the Bible, you know, to help each other, the two angels help each other so that the message could be delivered. The answer could be delivered to Daniel. To me, it is the same thing about my situation. That's how I view it, that even though the request was made and it looked like there was no answer. God had actually already given an answer. And it is good that I did not come out of my place of being thankful. And so I just want to encourage you to be thankful. Remember that the Bible says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart and I will enter his courts with praise. So if we're going to God for anything that we need, let us remember to go with thanksgiving and with praise in our hearts and there is nothing nothing absolutely nothing that is impossible to God just continue trusting him one of the reasons I'm encouraged to do this videos and I hope I can do one on my own channel because right now I'm doing it with my husband he set up the camera for me and thank you to you my husband Alan is because I realized that there is a perception that some are, you know, better or maybe more loved by God. But God loves us all. 
and there is that thing which you are trusting him for. Do not be dissuaded that God is not there for you. He is for you. Hold on to the promises that God has given you. And he will surely bring it to pass. So for today, that's the end of my Thanksgiving vlog. Keep being thankful. And from Alan and myself, we love you. God bless you. And I, I wanted to say nice weekend, but have a nice time, whatever part of the world you're watching this from. God loves you. Bye.